The question is, which comes in the outermost circle of the Venn diagram of Ackermann and Prophet? So this question is regarding the Ackermann and Prophet's classification of malocclusion. Now the first system of classification of malocclusion that was given by Angle classified malocclusion in the sagittal planes of space using the maxillary and mandibular molars. Okay, that is the permanent molars as the key to uh, classifying the malocclusion. So there were various limitations to this type of classification because it considered the malocclusion only in one plane of space that is the sagittal. It did not consider the other planes of space like transverse and vertical planes. It did not take, in, take into consideration the soft tissue components or the skeletal components. Right? So in order to overcome the limitations of this type of a classification, in the 1960s, Ackerman and Prophet came up with their own system of classification which utilized five major characteristics. Okay, now this is important. The five major characteristics that they included in their classification was the intra-arch alignment and symmetry, the profile, Okay, so by intra-arch alignment and symmetry, they considered crowding and spacing within an arch. By the profile, they uh, considered the soft tissue component, that is whether the patient has a convex, concave or a straight profile, whether it's anteriorly divergent or posteriorly divergent. They also considered the other planes of space like transverse, apart from sagittal, which we see in angles classification. They also considered the vertical planes of space, right? And they also considered them in the dental as well as skeletal. So whether if you see a posterior crossbite, whether it is unilateral, bilateral and whether the uh, crossbite is because of dental causes or because of skeletal causes. So they try to have a very comprehensive type of classification which included all aspects. Now apart from this, they also added two more uh, characteristics to help analyze uh, or better evaluate the uh, malocclusion. These two features were, the first was the aesthetic line of dentition. Okay, now this is similar to Angle's uh, functional line of occlusion. So in this image here, what you see as the red line is the Angle's uh, functional line of occlusion and what you see as the green line is the aesthetic line of dentition. Now, according to Angle's uh, functional line of occlusion, the mandibular buccal cusps, cusp tips, okay, so as you see in the mandibular arch, the red line is running on, along the buccal cusp tips, okay, should coincide with the functional line of occlusion of the maxillary central fossa. So, here you see in the maxillary, the functional line of occlusion is running along the central fossa of the maxillary teeth. So, these two lines should be coincident according to angle in order to get proper arch uh, symmetry and arch form. Okay, So, if these lines were coincident, it would uh, result in well aligned or an ideal occlusion. But the problem with this is that when the patient is in occlusion, you are not able to assess this line, right? Because it is going to be, uh, it is going to be obscured from view. So this green line of aesthetic line of dentition that was given, this is uh, uh, achieved by uh, joining the facial edges of the maxillary anterior as well as posterior teeth. So this can be viewed even when the patient is in occlusion or when the patient has uh, interdigitation of his teeth. So here you can see this is how the uh, aesthetic line of dentition is going to be seen okay, from the facial aspect. Now this line of dentition was given because it helps to assess uh, the aesthetics of the dentition and compare it to the face. Now this is done by the second characteristics that were given that is the rotational tendency of this aesthetic line of dentition along the various planes of space. So that is the pitch, roll and yaw. Now this is a very very important topic from exam point of view and asked very uh, often and repeatedly in the examinations that is the pitch, roll and yaw. Now, none of the previous classifications considered rotational tendencies of the dentition, okay. Now, what they attempted to do was not only assess the uh, rotational tendencies of the dentition, but also related it to the soft tissue, prof uh, soft tissue of the patient. So, it helped to identify the aesthetics also. So, along with any functional discrepancy, there was also aesthetic discrepancy that was noted. So, as we know, there are three planes of space, that is the anterior-posterior plane of space, the transverse and the vertical. 
So pitch, roll and yaw is nothing but the rotational tendencies around these three planes of space. Okay. Now pitch is the excessive upward and downward rotation of the dentition in relation to the uh, anterior posterior axis. Okay. So this pitch which is in red is the upward or downward rotation of the dentition in relation to the anterior posterior aspect. So how is this going to be seen clinically? Clinically it will appear like this. Okay, so here you see this is the root downward rotational tendency of the dentition along the anterior posterior plane of space which appears as excessive uh, gummy smile. Okay, so gummy smile and complete display of the dentition. The opposite of this would be excessive upward rotation where there would be a complete, uh, you know, no display of the teeth on um, a smile. That would be the reverse of this or the opposite uh, rotation that would be seen. So, pitch is the up and down rotation that is seen along the anterior posterior axis. The second is the roll. Okay, so roll is the up and down uh, deviation around the transverse axis. So, this is the transverse axis and this is the up and down rotation around the transverse axis. So, this is going to appear like this. Okay, so here what do you see? There is a rotation downward this way and a rotation upward this on like this, this side. So this is how it is appearing, right? When you see this is the upper lip, this is how the dentition is ro uh, rotating. There is a downward rotation on the right side and an upward rotation on the left side. So this up and down rotation around the transverse axis is exhibited as roll. This is roll. This is pitch. And finally, we come to yaw. So, yaw is this uh, side to side rotation that is seen along the uh, that is seen along the occlusal aspect or the occlusal plane. Okay, so this is a side to side rotation. So, how this appears is here you can see this is the midline, this is the facial midline of the patient, this is the dental midline of the patient. So, this appears as if the entire dentition has rotated in this direction. So, there is a side to side. In pitch and roll, there is an up and down deviation. Okay. But in yaw, there is a side to side rotation. So this appears as if the entire rot uh, dentition has rotated towards the left of the patient. So this is how yaw appears. Okay, so this is how th these are the characteristics that are included in the Ackerman and Prophets classification. And on the basis of these modifications, a new system was given. So in the old uh, classification or in the first system of classification that was given, the envelope of the Venn diagram consisted of intra-arch alignment and symmetry. And the first circle that was given, that was the profile. But after the modifications that were given, the outermost envelope, is the dentofacial appearance okay so that was given as the maximum priority that is how the dentition is going to up, uh, relate to the face whether the dentofacial appearance is symmetric asymmetric the profile the lips and the incisor display so these are all important soft tissue components so this was given as number one then the second was the arch form and symmetry which was actually seen as a number one in the previous classification right so in the previous classification intra arch alignment and symmetry was outside but in the new modification of the Ackerman and Prophets classification intra arch alignment and symmetry is number two okay that is the outermost circle then the other uh, others remain the same that is the transverse axis the sagittal axis and the vertical axis and the relationship between these axes were given as pitch, roll and yaw. Okay, so now, so now in our question we have been asked regarding the outermost circle of the Venn diagram in Ackerman and Prophet. So the outermost circle, okay, not they are not asking about this envelope, they are asking about the outermost circle. So we saw now that the outermost circle in the new classification is the intra-arch alignment. Okay, initially it used to be profile, but now the profile is outside. So that is the first characteristic and the second characteristic that is the outermost circle is intra-arch alignment and symmetry.